welcome to all for today's station on worm gears and its force analysis in general force analysis of the worm and worm wheel is based on some of the assumptions before doing it we should know which one is the driving element which one is the driven element type of threads right hand or left hand or direction of rotation may be clockwise or anti clockwise now in this presentation the force analysis is based on the following assumption driving element is worm and driven element is worm wheel or worm gear and always you will find in worm and worm gear drive the driving element is worm and driven member is worm wheel or gear again for a worm right handed threads are assumed it will help us while deciding the direction of axial component further direction of rotation of the worm is also assumed that is in anti clockwise direction we are aware of that worm and worm wheel or worm gear is subjected to a three components of gear to force one is the tangential component which is the required component to transmit the power second one is the axial component this is because of the teeth are cut with some inclination that is helix angle on the worm wheel or helix of the worm also and third one is the radial component it also acts towards the center of the worm and worm wheel the worm and worm gears is subjected to these three components tangential axial and radial now let us how to decide the direction of the force component now in this figure you will find this is the worm small gear and this is worm wheel or a worm gear now a is the observer or position of the observer here from this you will find worm rotates in anti clockwise direction worm rotates in anti clockwise direction the like a spur and helical gear the tangential component of this worm or input drive or driving element p1t is x in opposite direction to the rotation this rotates in anti clockwise that's why this tangential component opposite to this one suffix is used for the worm and two suffix is used for the worm wheel or worm gear again second thing here the p1r or pr radial force which x towards this center for this one now but here in this case p1 axial component is shown which acts towards this direction towards the left hand side how it is decided for this purpose the direction of rotation of the worm that is important and second type of thread now in this case right handed threads are used for worm or it is assumed to use your right hand or the thumb rule to decide the direction of axial component the right hand threads use a right hand on the gear here and again direction of rotation is anti clockwise put it in anti clockwise look at in this direction it is right hand and direction is anti clockwise after holding this gear this thumb thumb decides the direction of axial component therefore the p1a is having this direction towards this side towards left hand side in this way we can decide the direction of axial component by using this thumb rule come to the another point components of the tooth process now in this case you will find this is the worm and this is worm wheel or a worm gear 
Now look at inside view because by using only these two views, it's very difficult to understand the direction of the component of the process or tooth process. Now here inside view you will observe that worm rotates in anti-clockwise direction. The tangential component acts opposite to that. The P1T is the tangential component so on the worm. Then second already we have seen the worm is having right hand thread the by using the thumb roll and direction of rotation the we have decided the direction of the axial component towards left hand side that's why it is shown here P1A towards this side and P1R is the radial component which always acts towards the center here is also for the worm it also rotates if you are going to observe in earlier slide it is also rotates in anti-clockwise direction now here this is P2R is the radial component on the worm wheel over the gear again acts towards the center but here you will find this tangential component which acts in opposite direction as a P1A and in the direction of rotation of the worm wheel so you will find here in case of worm and worm wheel tangential component of the worm wheel is having the same magnitude of this axial force component of worm but directions are opposite and same way here inside view the p1t is the tangential component of the worm which acts opposite to the direction of rotation and here axial component of the worm wheel which is having the same magnitude of this tangential component but in opposite direction the magnitude of the force acting on the worm wheel is equal of the forces acting on the worm already explained but they are having opposite reaction of the force acting on it therefore if you would like to find out the forces on worm wheel or worm gear that is tangential component of worm gear is equal to axial component of worm similarly axial component of the worm wheel is equal to tangential component of the worm and radial component of the worm and worm will remain same but in opposite direction that means only force analysis it is sufficient to carry out for this worm and on this basis we can directly find out the magnitude of the other forces that is for worm wheel. Now here these worm gears are subjected to these forces but the resultant force acting on the worm is having two components. One because of the normal reaction between the missing teeth and second one is we are aware of that this is because of the frictional force. Why frictional force? Because in worm gears frictional force is significant and this is because of sliding motion between the threads of the worm and teeth of the worm gears and because of this there is another component of the frictional force along the helix of the worm that we have to take into component uh, consideration therefore resultant force acting on the worm having two components one because of normal reaction between missing teeth and second one is because of this frictional force and at the final to find out this resultant force forces or components we have to superimpose these two components and then we get resultant components let us see the first one component of normal reaction between missing teeth and how to find out it now look at this diagram this is worm it rotates already we have assumed it rotates in anti-clockwise direction then this is the pitch helix or thread of the worm here this is direction of rotation and this is p-cylinder of the worm. Now in this case as already discussed we have decided 
the directions of the gear tooth force components for the worm now here this is pt tangential component or pt 1 you can say opposite to the direction of rotation tangential then pr towards the center and pa by using thumb rule and direction of rotation and types of threads that is right hand so we have a direction of pa towards this side that is p1a this now here you will find here in this normal reaction this is p is the normal reaction component which makes an angle of alpha this is pressure angle again here this is the pn in top plane that is a e b f makes an angle of gamma gamma is the lead angle gamma is the lead angle in this case so you will find from these components or forces when it is subjected to pt pr and pa and to make its analysis now this p which is in the plane of a b c d to have the value of this p we have to consider this plane p a b c d in which alpha is the angle or pressure angle or normal pressure angle and another plane that we have to consider this plane a e b f where it is gamma that is lead angle now let us draw these planes here in another diagram now consider the first one now in this first plane that is a b c d this p is the normal reaction in the plane a b c d now look at this to find out this p n the p cos alpha you will get p n is equal to p cos alpha that means resolving this normal reaction p in this plane the what you will get p n is equal to p cos alpha and second for this p r sin alpha means p r upon this p therefore p r is equal to p sin alpha then consider another plane that is a e b f resolving the component p n so what you will get here this is p t and this is p a now we are consider here the worm that's why suffix 1 1 are used in this case therefore you will get p 1 a this component or you can say this is this component parallel to this the pn cos gamma and p 1 t is nothing but a sign of this so you will get pn sin gamma gamma is the lead angle so in next step we from this we have pn is equal to p cos alpha substitute this value of pn p cos alpha in this expression so what you will get p1a is equal to this pn this pn means p cos alpha substitute here so what you will get p cos alpha into cos gamma then substitutes p1t tangential component of the worm again here the value of pn pn again p cos alpha so what you will get p cos alpha into sin gamma and this radial component that is p1r radial component of the worm is equal to p sin alpha it remains same now these are the components of normal reaction now let us find out the components of the frictional force now here in case of worm and worm gear frictional force plays important role because of sliding motion and this resultant frictional force that is mu p and where mu is the coefficient of friction look at this this mu p it acts along the pitch helix but which is opposite to the direction of rotation this is the direction of rotation but it acts opposite to it and what we have to do again this frictional force is having two components this one is in this way and second one is in this way along the axis now let us find out two components of this frictional force mu p so you will get first one is 
म्यू पी कॉस गैमा म्यू पी कॉस गैमा एंड विच इज इन द टेंजेंशियल डिरेक्शन देन सेकेंड दिस कंपोनेंट दिस म्यू पी द म्यू पी साइन गैमा एंड इट इज इन एक्सल डिरेक्शन बट ऑपोजिट टू पी ए वी हैव सीन पी ए एक्स टू वज दिस साइड बट दिस म्यू पी साइन गया ऑपोजिट टू दिस डिरेक्शन बट दिस म्यू पी कॉस गैमा opposite to the direction of rotation but it is having the same direction like a tangential component because for a worm tangential composer component which acts in opposite to the direction of rotation now these are the two components because of this frictional force we know that the components of normal reaction and components of frictional force now what we have to do we have to superimpose this both components of normal reaction and frictional force superimposing it now here axial component of the worm that is p cos alpha into cos gamma now already we have p cos alpha into cos gamma and this is tangential component plus we have to add here frictional force component now here for axial p cos alpha into cos gamma But here, why mu p sine gamma? Why negative sine is considered mu p sine gamma? Because axial components of the worm, that is p one a, act towards this side, and this mu p sine gamma, which acts in opposite direction, that's why negative sine is used instead of plus. The minus mu p sine gamma. Then second, superimposing tangential. Now for the normal reaction component, p cos alpha into sine gamma. But in this case, this is the tangential component of the worm. In the uh, component of normal reaction, and tangential component of this frictional force that is mu p cos gamma, and which is in the same direction of p t one. Therefore, it is added plus mu p cos gamma. So by using these two expression, you will get the magnitude of the component of the worm. Or take. p as a common outside from these two terms so you will get p in bracket cos alpha into cos gamma minus mu sin gamma and similarly p1 t is equal to p in bracket cos alpha sin gamma plus mu cos gamma bracket complete and p1 r is equal to p cos sorry p sin alpha it remains same then to in while solving the problem what we have to do we have to find out the magnitude of the components of the resultant tooth force So because of this, so let us take P one a upon P one two. We have a value of this axial component of the worm and tangential component of the worm. So P one here P common both get cancel. So what you will get only these two brackets remain here. Then make the arrangement of this P one way is equal to P one t. Let us send this P one t towards this side. P one t into this term by using this expression. We can find out the axial component. Then second, P one R upon P one to make the arrangement. Put P one R is equal to P sine alpha and P one T is equal to P in bracket cos alpha sine gamma plus mu cos gamma. Again, send this P one T towards this side. It multiply P one T into this. By using this expression, we can find out radial component of the worm. By using this expression, axial component of the worm. But What is the value of tangential component of this work? So from the power we can find out the torque transmitted, and d1 is the PCD of the work. By using this expression, we can find out P1T and substitute this P1T here to get the radial component of the work and P1T here to get the axial component. That means by using these expressions we can find out magnitude of the components. Thank you. I have referred B. B. Bandari's book, Design of Machine Element, Megaroy Publication. If you have any query related to this topic, contact me at nine eight nine zero four two double six seven nine or pbkushare at the rate kkwag dot edu dot in. Thank you.